Medina. I'm from Chapel, I'm a junior. I'm Fabian, also a junior, same school. And yeah, well, thank you guys for coming. Thank you. We'll walk your socks off. Go ahead. So, right now, we're going to ask you guys some questions. And I want you guys to take a minute to think of it, and then I'm going to ask for some, someone to share the answers. Yeah, first question is what is the first thing, the first picture that comes to mind when you think of poverty? So just like general poverty, like just you say you hear the word poverty, what do you think of? What do you go? Famine. Alright. Slum. Slum. Yes. Suffering. Suffering. Anyone else? Yes. Hunger. Hunger. Good. So now I have a second question for you guys. Same thing. Think about it. We're gonna ask for some answers. Where do you see poverty in your city? Where I mean by social class, age range, or even physically where? Which areas of your city? Yeah. Uh, everywhere. Like, it's, like one one block you will be in like uh, a high class neighborhood, and then the next block is destroyed, and then the next block uh, like uh, again, I mean, so like just everywhere. Like there's little pockets of everything. In, the next one. Yes. in Sao Paulo, there's basically poverty. Everywhere, like depending, you can be like you said in like a really fancy neighborhood, and then right next to it there can be a favela. I see. All right, now the last question we have for you guys. What is the first idea that comes to mind when you think of a serious project? Usually these involve like helping more um, lower class people. So what is when you think of having a serious project of sort? What do you really think of? Maybe it could be your individual project. So who do you think of helping, for example? Children. Children. Yes. Elderly. <laughs> 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 All right. So to begin our presentation, our title is the Pagan Generation: Others in Poverty. Mm -hmm. So why did we choose this title, which is pretty dramatic and very sad if you think about it, the Pagan Generation? But we were talking to the director of the elderly home that we volunteered in, and she told us various times the Brazilian people still haven't learned how to take care of the elders. They take care of kids, you see many volunteers with kids, many volunteers with animals, but rarely you see people volunteering with elders. That's why we call it the Pagan Generation. So the group that we formed to really battle this and help the elders that are really in need is called Study Zones. We formed this January, January, well, February of this year. And the last semester, it was more of a Kickstarter project. We really were all we're still gathering ideas and making sure that everything ran smoothly, looking for places to go. And our, our motto, as you could say, is creating paths because, and the name that we chose is Stepping Zones, because of the fact that we are trying to create a path to guide students to be able to uh, engage in such community service projects that some people really sometimes want to help, but they don't know how. And well, by creating this group, we're forming this, these stepping stones for people to be able to engage in such projects that they want to do to help other people. So a little bit about our group. First of all, this is a picture, a compilation of the pictures of all our volunteers in the heart. And so to explain a little bit of how it all began, when they mean they we were thinking of how, how much people in our school, they really want to help either the inside community or the outside community, but they don't know where to go to, they don't know where to start. They just think of it, but they don't actually act on it. So we thought that maybe we could create a group to begin such projects. But then we had to choose where, which path we would lead them to. If we would help them with kids, what we, what, where would we guide them? And so we got to the conclusion that not many people think of elders. So fortunately, there was another home right next to our school. So that was very convenient because we could go volunteer there and at the same time be close to our school, which would be very convenient for rides and all that. So in the beginning of our project last semester, we had only 10 students. And these 10 students were usually our friends that we made them go to the project <laughs> because not many people were interested in it. However, this year something amazing happened. We have 25 volunteers and most of them, we don't have to make them go. They just go for their own free will. So we're really growing. <laughs> and also, something that helped us grow a lot was the school. They gave us a lot of support. They helped us um, market the project a lot. They let us, during masses, announce the project. 
like doing announcements, also market a bit of the project. And also they gave us an advisor, which is a teacher that helps us when you have some issue or we want some ideas. So the school gave us a lot of support. Yeah, so basically what is it that we do? Like, in, in, okay, you guys know that we help elders, we, but really there's such a big variety of things that you can do with people and with especially people in Zoro classes. So what really, what are we focusing on? Which we will show in a video, which I have in here. I gotta get it. Here. <coughs> okay, so this is kind of similar to the one that we showed um, in the film festival, but it's a little bit more elaborate, I think. It's a little more detailed. Kid that was like 
very irresponsible about at school, and apparently, thanks to her, he became like super famous and rich and a politician. And so, he thanks her for her work, and she, he used to say that she changed his life. So, she asked him, I mean, he asked her, "What is it that you want in return?" And all she said was, "I want you to help me found uh, this house." for the elders, and it started off as very small, but it started expanding then thanks to many donations, and thanks to the politician, which I forgot his name, but he helped a lot too. And currently there are about 90 elders residing there, which um, was a big difficulty thanks to, uh, because of the economic uh, reasons. And there are many social interactions that happen in the house that the house supports, there is, they really like age variety, because of course the elders interact amongst themselves, it's fine, but it is, it's not the same thing as having um, some adults or even some kids or some teenagers come and talk to them, just spend some time, just talk to them about their day, things that they like, things that they don't like. Because if you go there, they're usually just sitting in a couch, just you know, watching the 6 p.m. novella or something, you know, they don't really get to socialize or interact with other people. So they have a lot of programs, there's Adoption by Union, which translates to Adopt an Elder, which is basically, you kind of sign this pledge to take care of a specific elder, uh, you devote your time specifically to him, so maybe you visit him once or twice a week, you talk to him, you make him feel kind of nice and happy, and then there's Doe Son Pinyinfo, which is donate your time, which doesn't focus on one specific elder, but on many, and it's just like, giving you time for anything, for interactions, maybe for like some events that they do, they do sometimes to bazaars and stuff. So that's basically that. And there's also economic aid, which we will explain better later, but economic aid, there's big foundation like sponsors, like I think Panasonic donated like some TVs and there's people that donate beds and stuff and, and yeah. So what exactly do we do? We go from every every Monday from 3.20 to 4.20. We chose that time because it was very convenient since during that time teachers were having meetings. So the students don't have any athletic practices, so they don't have an excuse not to go. So it's a very convenient time that they cannot go. We also do a variety of activities. One of them we showed in the video, which it was the tree. We also take sometimes very talented musical students that we have to play for them, which they really like. We also just sometimes go there and socially interact, just sit down, listen to them, because many of the elders that are there, like Kaden said, come from very distant places, so their families don't visit them, they don't send letters, they have absolutely no one, only the elders themselves, so it's, they find it really nice when we're there just to listen to them and devote our time to them. Um, we also do, um, like Kaden said, mentioned economic aid, we did a bake sale where we raised money and we donated the money to the institution, but we donated it in forms of beans, so they were really in need of beans. So we went and we bought 400 yards worth of beans for them and we donated. And about our future plans, since we are juniors, we only have one more year to be in this group. So we are already recruiting um, younger students, like we have two ninth graders, we plan on getting even more, even younger students so that eventually they can take over the project. We will see who really has an interest for this and who's really willing to take care of it and pass on the group for them. Okay, so now we will like switch a little bit and talk about specific elders that we feel are, they have really inspiring stories. We sometimes go there and we talk to these people and we get really shocked by the things they have to tell us because it's really, they're people and they have lives and they came from these very distant places with these amazing stories. Sometimes you just want to like, just hug them, you know, and cuddle and like just, it's such an intense moment sometimes with some of them that really just want to express themselves and tell about their lives. So we wanted to just share a little bit with you about just a couple of elders that we found that have very interesting stories. And one thing you will notice in between the three stories that we'll show is that these elders that are at the home they come from very humble backgrounds because to be in this home, the elders don't have to pay. They go there and, like we said, the house um, survives from donations. So they're from humble backgrounds that go there and they don't have to pay. So they were usually either vendors on the streets or maids or things like that that you'll see. 
So the first elderly we chose is Dona Melinda, which is the one in the picture. And she worked as a farmer in a rice field her whole life. And she went to the house, she's been in the house for 20 years. However, like we explained, she came from a distant place, so she hasn't seen her siblings in 20 years. Uh, there's Sarah Rubens, he is my favorite dude. I, I talk to him a lot, and he is, he used to work as a truck driver, where it is, uh, when he was younger, he traveled all of Brazil. He likes to share his stories about all the things he saw and all the experiences, experiences he had with these different people. So he's a very upbeat man. He likes to just talk to everybody, and I just, I love the kid. He is currently blind because of glaucoma, which ended his uh, career as a truck driver, and which made him uh, go into poverty. And because of his lack of family, I think he only had a, a brother that helped him. He had to eventually go to the Casa do Ginalogu to because he couldn't really, as, as a blind man, he couldn't really continue his career. And one of the things that really interested me about him is that he said it like I could quote, he lives for music. He has, I think, the whole collection of CDs from, um, what's, it? No, what's, what's it? jazz singer called? What's it jazz? Yes. What? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think it's him. Sanget. And he loves um, all, he loves American music, he loves Brazilian music. He sometimes you just see him and he has a little radio on, his little CD player, like very, very hipster kind of thing. He's just like nodding his head like this, like it's super awesome. And when he takes uh, music, he's the first one always to like just go in the front and he's always like super happy. And he just tells me all these stories and he sings the lyrics for me and it's really cool. And another, actually, this is not in the slides, but there's another friend of his, which I met that, well, have you guys heard of freestyle rapping? It's a, more, it's a pretty general term, it's pretty awesome. He is like an older version of a freestyle rapper, you know, like the 1900s kind of deal. You tell him a word, and he start, he makes an instant song slash poem about anything. Like, you tell him your name, and he just declares a poem to you. It's, I think it's pretty cool, because, I don't know, I find that pretty hard myself to do, so... I, I don't know, these others always have these super awesome skills and they're super interesting. And then there's Sr. Geraldo. He was a former construction worker and he has muscular dystrophy so he can't hold his neck up. So he has all the support in his neck and he is in a wheelchair. He can walk but he can only walk short distances. However, something really interesting that captivated us since the beginning and that most, most kids, most of our volunteers usually go talk to him and like interact with him because he makes these awesome baskets and pots out of magazine rolls. So he gets a magazine sheet and he rolls it really thin and then he uses glue to create this. Somehow he has this awesome talent. And so the kids just love to go there and observe and they're actually planning because he says that his teacher showed him that so he wants to pass it on to someone. So our students are really interested in just sitting there and observing it and maybe who knows when they learning how to do it. Okay, we have a couple, like a little, yeah, just a, a couple of interesting facts for you, just um, about poverty in Brazil, because we want to let you know how important poverty is and how big it is in Brazil. So we have a little, like, kind of like a trivia thing that we want you guys to, like, guess here. So we're going to put a, lot, a couple of questions here, and we want to see what you think is the answer. So the first one is, out of all the states, out of the 25 states in Brazil, which position on the rank of poverty do you think the state of Sao Paulo is ranked in? Any volunteers? 20, 25 being the most poor or the least No, poor? one, the poorest. Yes. Okay. Third. One. Third. One. Third, okay. Fifth. Fifth. Ten. 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 Four. Alright. It's actually the 22nd. And so far, and even though it's, this, like, what this represents is that um, if Sao Paulo has all these like elders and all these um, favelas that are so, such so poor, imagine all the other states that are so much worse than Sao Paulo, you know. And we would love to, you know, help in other states, but apparently, you know, I mean, it's a little far. So we're trying to do whatever we can in Sao Paulo to maybe even try to help this code. 23rd, 24th, 25th. Um, it's pretty shocking. I mean, it's a nice one. 
So the next question is, how many people live in poverty in the city of Sao Paulo? Just an estimate. How many people in Sao Paulo? I guess. 12 million. 12 million. 18 million? 12 million. 12 million. 12 million. 2 million. 2 million? 2 million, right. 2 No, like 10 million. 10 million? Or more. 4 million? I mean, it's 12 million, so. 7 million. 7 million. 7 million. I would say that's 5 million. 5 million? 4. 4? 4. Right. Oh, <laughs> now, it's a pretty small number, but it's small. Yeah. yeah. Compared in comparison to Sofa. Yeah, it's not small. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But you have to also consider the fact that it's one of the richest states in Brazil. And this is actually when we refer to poverty, we refer to extreme poverty. So uh, very little access to water, barely any access to education. And there's many, many more than 625,000 that can't even read or write. So now the next question is, how much do you think these people get per day and or per month? So just an estimate. Yeah. 250 per month. 250 per month. That is yeah. the minimum wage, more or less. You know, just 364? 400? 650 reais if you convert is like 300 dollars. Yeah, yeah, right. Pretty much. Right, any guesses? Any other guesses? Per day or per month? Doesn't matter. Per month. <laughs> in dollars per day, like in dollars per day, I think like a dollar. Like a dollar and a dollar. Less than 150 per month. 50 reais or dollars? 150 dollars. Okay. They get four reais per day. That's 140 reais per month. So two dollars per day, sixty-two dollars per month. Try surviving on two dollars a day, people. That's 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 pretty rough. I mean, uh, six hundred and twenty-five thousand people get that per day. So the last question is: What percentage of the total population of the city of São Paulo lives in poverty? Surprisingly, it's 20%, but that's still a big number if you think of it. Compared to, as Fabian said, the 10% of the 
whole population levels in poverty. That's a big percentage. Okay. And we wanted to just like uh, show that in the last 30 years it was 45, we moved down to 20. It shows improvement. It's good. Improving is good. And what we want to do is just support this whole improvement of uh, the power, like decreasing poverty in Brazil. So by helping elders, we are like in a less direct way doing this, which is we found it pretty cool. And like the director of the house said, try to move the spotlight a little bit more to the elders. Try to focus a little bit more on that age range. So how exactly are you fighting poverty with elders? Because now you guys know what we do. You guys know the situation of poverty in Brazil. But how are we combining those two things? Right. So there's economic aid, as I mentioned, and um, we do donations. Like Korea said, we uh, donated already beans to the house, and we this is only the start. We started really to focus on donations this semester. It's only been two months, so we haven't had time to do so many fundraisers to really donate money. But we are we have already plans to many 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 fundraisers to be able to do this more often. There is, okay, so in chapel, in our school, there's a Christmas bazaar. You guys know what a bazaar is? It's like a little, yeah, like little shops, like little <coughs> tables. They put them around the school. It's kind of, it's, it's a little big. Uh, there's usually um, a lot of moms or even outside companies that come to sell the products. It's kind of like the like, Sanat the that was Dark to Craft that were here. Okay. Yeah, but a little bit, uh, it was bigger. So, uh, and we talked to the group organizing, the parent teacher association. And we convinced them to allow Sergio Gerardo, which is the guy who made the little baskets, to participate in and to be able to sell the baskets there. Because, um, I don't know, it would be a good way to give money to him. And just a little interesting fact is that he gives half the money that he gains to the house and then he keeps the other half. Although he doesn't really use much of it. He says he bought a very really cool wheelchair the other day. It was like electronic and it's like, he was like showing it off saying so he had three speeds and everything. So, you know, he likes he has his fun with his self. And there are fundraisers. In, in, there's like a student council. Yeah, you know, yeah, student council in our, in our school. Each class has a, a class of money, like funds for each class. And they, to raise money for the class, they do bake sales. So our class, we talked to our class, and we got, I think it was all of them, or if not most of them, to approve giving half of the base of money that we won to donate it. And this is the money used to buy the beans for the house. And we plan on doing this. This is one of the ways that we're going to have income to be able to engage in these donations for the house. And also, we help we aid the poverty by socially as well, because we don't believe that help is only in cash. We also, if you think about it, the section of the population, usually in most countries that are poor, they're socially excluded from the rest. They don't have many interactions. So by bringing volunteers of, let's say, higher social classes, which are the students from our school, we're making the social um, interaction possible with the elders. And also, um, like as we mentioned, the people that live in the home, they're considered poor because, like we explained, they don't have to pay to the inside. Maybe not all of them are poor, they just want to be there because they don't have to pay. But most of them just use it as a refuge because they don't have anywhere else to go. So now, steps to create a group like this in maybe your school, if you're interested in doing so. The first thing we did is find a group of two people. So in this case, it was me and Fabian that was, had the initiative to create this group. But it doesn't necessarily have to be two people. It can be with one, but it's very hard and lonely to work in one person. So we, we advise you guys to do it in two or more. Then we find an adult can, that can assist you. And we tell you this by personal experience because when we started the group, we didn't look for an adult. We just started it on our own, and it was very hard. We had to have meetings with so many people. As I said, if we had a teacher with us, the teacher could help us arrange a little bit better and make the process a little bit faster. Then you can find an elder's home that preferably could be close to your school because then, like we mentioned, the way to get there and to come back is easier and people can go there and then come back to do some other schoolwork. But really it can be any other home that you guys are interested in creating and helping. But then you have to get the school's approval, of course. You can't just create a project without the school's consent. So you have to find some way to talk to the administration. 
for them to help you with this. And then you have to market a lot. Like we said in the beginning, we didn't have many people. We had to make people go. But don't lose hope if that happens with you because eventually people will start getting interested and they'll see that their friends are going so they're going to want to go. And this list that we're seeing really applies to any volunteer group that anyone wants to start, but we're just using the other home as an example. And lastly, you just go and, and make the others happy. Okay, so yeah, now we're going <laughs> to we're going to open questions from anyone. Uh, anything that you want to ask, feel free.